Ideas have consequences. And until more people in the political conversation recognize that very salient fact, we will continue to miss the significance of events that occur in our society. So many of you who are well informed and have not been living under a rock are for sure aware of the shooting that happened in Nashville where a 28-year-old transgender individual called Audrey Hale went into a Christian school in Nashville, shot up it, shot up the school, killed about six people, three students and three adults and families across the nation are mourning not only this incident, but there are families in Nashville mourning the death of their children. And so before I even begin my commentary, may we send regards to them and may they may God give them strength during these very difficult times. But immediately in the wake of this tragedy, due to the fact that the suitor has identified as being transgender, a, fe a biological female who believes they are a male, several different reactions happened in the media. For once, several left-wing news outlets rushed to correct themselves for misgendering the shooter, um, supposedly because they did not use his proper pronouns, and they were urged to do so by several Twitter users. These media outlets include places like USA Today, MSNBC, The New York Times, so on and so forth, and CNN, all of which issued some kind of retraction or apology for not respecting the pronouns of the mass murderer who went into the school and killed all of those people. Not only that, but we had a letter come out from the Trans Resistance Network, which is sort of a collectivist group of trans activists that hold themselves to be the vanguard in defense of trans people. And they said, amongst many things, that there are true tragedies that happened in Nashville. One was the obvious loss of life on behalf of the Christian students and the workers. But the other was how trans people are supposedly discriminated against. They go on to say this. The second and more complex tragedy is that Aiden, or Audrey Hell, who felt he had no other effective way to be seen than to lash out by taking the life of others and by consequence himself. We do not claim to know the individual or have access to their inner thoughts and feelings. We do know that life for transgender people is very difficult and made more difficult in the preceding months by a virtual avalanche of anti-trans legislation and public call-outs by right-wing personalities and political figures for nothing less than the genocidal eradication of trans people from society. Audrey Hell has been used and continues to be used by advocates of a particular ideology as a mascot for the collective as opposed to an individual who had certain elements and certain problems and, cer and was possessed by certain ideas, which I'll get to in a second, which moved them to commit such an atrocity. Evidence of this claim is further seen in a North Dakota pastor comparing the mass murderer to Jesus Christ, saying that the mass murderer, again, represents the persecuted, marginalized group of trans people, the so-called marginalized group of trans people that exists in America who continue to get attacked and who feel they need to latch out this way. Now, on the right, the reaction has been even more interesting. Ben Shapiro, a prominent conservative commentator, he seems to be calling or pushing for gun control measures for people suffering from gender dysphoria and or trans people. Also, there have been numerous people like Elijah Schaefer who have actually called for, pe for trans people to be seen as dangerous. In fact, Elijah Schaefer says in the following tweet, trans people are dangerous, but more dangerous to themselves than anyone else, with only representing such a small fraction of the population. They're clearly mentally unstable individuals and, be and have become... Uh, and becoming more militant by design. This won't be the last they slash them shoot. He then goes on to say in another tweet, they are much more likely to kill themselves than others, but that instability and lacking value over their own lives will be preyed upon. The anger will be directed at the other. Three-letter agencies will use them as well, where an incel is unable to be coerced. Division by design. What Elijah Schaefer is essentially saying here, saying a few things, he's saying number one, that trans folks, given their condition, are inherently a danger to themselves and can become a dangerous society. And number two, political forces in America that could use law enforcement could use them as a means to carry out the social agendas. That's basically what he's saying. All of these reactions, and there's plenty more that I'm not going to cover because, again, I'm not trying to be a bullhorn for other people's thoughts and sentiments. You guys came here to hear mine. All of these reactions commit several errors in reasoning that need to be corrected and corrected swiftly if any of us are going to be able to make sense 
out of any of this. One of the reasons why I actually waited so long to do a video on this, because I don't want to be someone who gives a hot take. I want to give deliberate, measured, and rational analyses of these very difficult events. Number one is the problem I've alluded to before. All of these reactions view trans folks and uh, as a collective, A, and B, view Audrey Hell as a representative of that collective. But the problem with viewing people as a collective is that the collective in reality does not exist. The collective is an abstract group that we ap apply and append things to given their proximity to certain activities and a similarity of condition. So for example, we may say that trans people do X or Y because trans people happen to have something in common. But fundamentally, just because you have a shared characteristic or trait or behavior pattern does not mean you become that trait, behavior pattern or characteristic. Human beings are much more complex than that. And anyone, whether it's the right or the left, commits an egregious fallacy when they begin to estimate individuals in these very abstract terms. We don't measure groups, we measure individuals. Society is not merely a composition of groups and ethnicities. It is fundamentally a, comp comp a compilation of individuals with their own values, with their own likes, dislikes, tastes, and, ta and, and, and non-taste. And also, even within groups, there is a significant variation, which is why there's so much factionalism and fighting and politics and conflict, things like that. So all of that stuff is to say that the way this has been analyzed with some of the biggest and most influential voices in this realm has been epistemically erroneous, and you cannot find a truthful conclusion from a false premise. The laws of logic tell us the premise must be true in order to reach a truthful conclusion. Now, you can have an argument that says something false, but leads to a true conclusion, but you don't get to that by having the false beginning. You must have a truthful beginning to get to the truth. And right now, the beginning is not truthful. That's number one. Number two, this kind of follows along with it. There is a significant emphasis being put on Audrey Hale as a person, as opposed to realizing that Audrey Hale, as a person, she holds certain beliefs that precipitate or can precipitate the kind of behavior we saw on display from her during the Nashville school shooting. Hence the title of this video, Gender Ideology is Behind the Nashville School Shooting. The correct approach to this situation is not to attack individuals, not to associate individuals together by, the, by them holding a single characteristic. It is to investigate what motivated this individual. Now, unfortunately for us, as the posting of this video, the manifesto has not been released yet. The FBI and others are holding it. You can speculate as to why. I think we all know as to why, because it could possibly, well, I don't actually, I don't know as to why, but we can guess as to why, but they're not releasing it. So you can't really say one way or another what definitively led this person to do what they did, but we can say on the basis of what ideas they seem to represent what was actually going on. Trans folks are fundamentally individuals as we are as our, all people are at their core. There are some percentage of trans people who undergo surgery for the gender dysphoria and they come out feeling happier than ever. And there's an even greater percentage of those same people who undergo the same surgery and the feeling of discontent within their souls still is stirred up. It doesn't go away. Having said that, not all of them or even most of them are predisposed to violent behavior. And to treat them as if they are is to take a fundamentally irrational take on the whole situation. The true threat to civilization are not really individuals who may hold idiosyncratic conditions. It is ideas, subversive ideas, manifested through the actions of those individuals and subversive ideas can latch on to any of us regardless of what we think we are or who we say we are.
Subversive ideas unfortunately latch onto the soul, and the soul is a greater element of the self than identity is. Know that principle, and you will be able to navigate all of the nonsense that is oftentimes said in contemporary conversation. So we have to understand, if subversive ideas are bad, then what ideas that are the opposite of subversive are good? Well, all moral people have to appeal to foundations in order to develop their sense of ethics. Subversive ideas literally attack foundations and remove meaning from the objective and place it in the subjective. That is the problem. And that makes the idea of there being an objective morality or an objective truth illusory and difficult to obtain. This is precisely what the gender ideologues have done. They have taken the idea of ethics and the idea of morality and they've wrapped it up in this language of lived experience, this language which says that my own estimation of things in the world, colored through my identity, my sexual orientation, my race, my gender identity, or whatever, is what is true. It is my truth. And if someone goes against my lived experience, they are effectively erasing me as a person because not only are my opinions tied up with this lived experience, but my existence is equally tied up with this lived experience. Which is why when you critique the idea of gender ideologue, or you critique the ideas of a lot of woke people, they will tell you that you're committing erasure, not because you're actually harming them, but because they have a false idea of who they are and they have tied their idea of themselves up into what they are so much so that they are no longer truly acting as a person, they are acting as an emissary for this false idea of knowledge. That is the root of a lot of this stuff. So when you take this a step further and you narrow this down to certain modes of contemporary thinking, first principles, you know, how do we understand things? What are the basic bedrock foundations of everything are no longer important, but he who holds power and let's, let's do another one. He who holds power and he who can assert that power through conflict. Those are the people who are seen as the important ones, and that is where value lies. For gender ideology, the power and the conflict of those involved are really what matters. The entire idea of gender ideology is that certain identities have been suppressed by norms, and those norms are oppressive, and therefore it is for people who hold those identities to fight against those norms and to reclaim them. And so when conflict, when gender Marxism, in a in, in formal and in colloquial sense, Marx never talks about gender, but his idea of class conflict is very much translated into this idea that the holding a, a minor, minority or a marginalized identity having to reclaim it is dominant society that's a very much against the Marxian frame what that becomes the locus of what is ethical and what is moral it's no longer about first principles it's no longer about objective principles it's, it's no longer about using your faculty of reason where all human morality arises from our ability to reason that's why man's a higher animal it is entirely about who holds power who can obtain power and through what means can one obtain power you have to understand, when you have this kind of moral system, or rather I would say immoral system, which focuses entirely on power and on the subjective and not on things beyond ourselves, you can justify any kind of behavior you want. You can justify any kind of beliefs you want because where is your moral foundation? How do you distinguish between right and wrong if everything is a matter of lived experience? There is a reason why Audrey Hell is being canonized and valorized by so many people because Audrey Hell is being seen as merely living out their lived experience and their lived experience being tarnished with so much so-called discrimination and so on and so forth. 
It is in erroneous to merely attribute this to mental illness. There is a more fundamental fight for the meaning of value, the meaning of truth, the meaning of what society to be, the meaning of what civilization is, the meaning of what proper behavior is, that are all contained in this debate over gender. That's what we have to recognize. To the gender ideologist, Audrey Hale was merely acting as an oppressed minority, trying to fight back against dominant structures of oppression, lashing out against them due to the effects those dominant structures of oppression have put on them their entire life. This is the subjectivist, super egoistic, super moral in the words of Nietzsche, insanity that has overrun so much contemporary thinking as relates to gender, sexual orientation, and race in this country. Epistemic monsters, my friends, have overran civilization, infected a great deal of mentally vulnerable people, such as trans folks, with the wrong idea of reality, and then animated them to defend this idea of reality as if their life depends on it, because in a sense, it does. Their conception of their life depends on this false idea of reality. Many trans people, including trans youth, are merely victims of an overarching cultural illness which appeals to their base desires and has no interest in actually helping them achieve eudaimonia, has no interest in actually helping them achieve human flourishing. This is not a condition that needs to be met with scorn. This is a condition that needs to be met and embraced with love, empathy, and, 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 and patience. But in the haze of the culture war, where individuals are no longer consideration, but abstract ideals tied up on the battlefield are all you see. Love, empathy, patience, and kindness, these basic human virtues. Lord Kames called them the secondary virtues that we should all have to enhance society. They go away. How can the right talk about virtues? Talk about a good society or religious and moral people or whatever quotes like to use when they continue to miss the source of this problem and by doing so forsake a key intellectual virtue which is prudence it doesn't seem possible to me the question is this my friends will you continue to attack individuals as uh, who are afflicted with bad ideas and who are motivated by bad ideas towards a certain end or will you recognize their condition recognize the ideas that motivate them, and attack those ideas, destabilize those ideas, and subvert those ideas so much so that any utterance of them in public is met with swift, rational, peaceful, and voluntary rejection, or will you continue to misattribute the problem? Many leftists have said the problem is the guns. No, the problem is not the guns. The guns didn't make Audrey Hell kill those people. Her very warped conception of herself did. Her very mis uh, misunderstanding, profound misunderstanding of reality did. And her utilization of lived experience, which is also being used for her by so many people secondhand to analyze her actions. All of those things most certainly played a role in her behavior. We'll know more when the manifesto comes out. But this, these are the, these are the truth, these are the facts. Audrey Hale's not a victim. This is not apologia. But... They were led by certain ideas that are unfortunately being afflicted on a lot of people much younger than them who are victims. And as a civilization, we must stand up and say no. We cannot allow this to happen. We must stand up and say no. Our civilization was founded on truth, on the rights of the individual over the collective, on, on, on voluntary cooperation, on the principle of sociability in which man has an affection for his community. And having an affection of his community as an affection for other human beings. And having an affection for other human beings, he, rep he recognizes their complexity. Recognizes their importance, their value. And he respects that by restraining from taking things that belong to him. The moment we begin to embrace gender ideology is the moment all of these ideas go away. My friends, I love you guys so much. If you love me, be sure to like this video, comment on this video, subscribe to this channel, share this video. I love you guys so much, and please stay pensive. Bye, guys.